Welcome to Flagstaff, Arizona. We actually really love Flagstaff. And if you remember, we were just here a couple months ago when we drove Route 66. Although our visit here was very short, so we didn't get to see a whole lot of the area then. Today, we're actually going to share with you two national monuments that you can literally get into for the price of one. So if you pay for one, you can actually go see the other. So we are visiting Sunset Crater National Monument, and we are going to visit Watputki National Monument today, which are actually just really cool places. Flagstaff does have three. The third one is Walnut Canyon. You may have also seen that on our Route 66. Highly recommend that. And it's actually not too far from here. So if you're in the area and visit you have the time. Visit all three. Visit all three. <laughs> They're, all three of them are worth it. All right, but let's get out there and take a look at this beautiful, beautiful place that we love so much. So the first monument that we are visiting today is the Sunset Crater National Monument. And you can see Sunset Crater right behind me. So this crater is only estimated to be about a thousand years old. They estimated that this formed sometime around 1040 to 1100. And the actual volcano or crater stands about a thousand feet tall and is about a mile wide at the base. So it's not super huge, but this is a relatively new landscape here in Arizona. I mean, it pretty much did not exist a thousand years ago. I don't know why you are walking across that right now. Well, why not? <laughs> Because I haven't seen ice and snow in a while. If you slip and fall. <laughs> then I'm going to hurt my bottom, I guess. <laughs> well, I've got the camera, so I don't want to slip and fall and bust my tail. You kind of have to walk on it. <laughs> So we're hiking the trail known as the Lava Flow Trail. A little over a mile long, some of it's paved, some of it is not. The Lava Flow Trail leads you through the lava flow that was created when the Sunset Volcano erupted. And it's really cool because you can see all the, the different kind of rocks and the black soil that got deposited when the volcano erupted. So there are actually all kinds of cool formations that you can see out here that were created by the lava flow. Right behind me is what is called a spatter cone, also known as a hornitus, which stands for, or translates to little ovens in Spanish. What happened with this is so the top layer of the ground is cooled and there is an opening where lava flow can kind of come up and it basically creates like this little round oven. And as the lava flow comes up, it kind of spatters out the side and that's what's kind of created these walls is the spatter as it kind of came up. It's really pretty cool to see and to kind of understand how they were actually made. At one point you were actually able to climb up to the top of the volcano. Unfortunately now due to erosion in 2006 they put a huge stop to it because it was scarring the south side. The south side is just the black ash slash rock slope that you see and there used to be two feet wide paths that eventually eroded to over 60 feet and that's when the National Park Service was like whoa wait a minute maybe we should try and protect the volcano and not let people climb it anymore. This is not the first time the National Park Service has had to stop in. As a matter of fact in 1928 there was a movie company that wanted to dynamite the crater. I don't know which company or movie but that's what the sign said. up our nice little hike and we drove a little bit further through the monument and we are at a place called the Cinder Hills Overlook. And what's really cool about this is that you have a view of a lot of the, the hills and the mountains that were formed from the San Francisco volcanic field. So it's actually kind of really cool to see all these other little uh, craters or cinder, cinder cones, cinder cones, yeah, cinder cones. Um, out here. So um, there's a ton. There yeah, is, there, there there's a lot. A and it's beautiful out here. The views are beautiful. So before we head to the next national monument, just wanted to point out this guy here behind me. It's a ponderosa pine. The crazy thing is, is that when you look at them, they're all gnarled and twisty, and they actually do that to be more flexible so that they're stronger in the wind and rain and snow and whatever storms come. It helps them stay upright. Pretty cool. Good job, tree. Good job. As you leave one national monument to go to the other, the uh, Sunset Crater 
National Monument has, you know, mountains and trees and... And it's like all black, like where you can see the volcanic rock and stuff. Out here, it's more of a deserty landscape with uh, scrub bushes and it's flat. Yes, it's pretty flat. Lots of red rock out here. Absolutely beautiful, but this is the, I won't say they're like combined, but this is the Wupatki National Monument section. And so what's cool about this side is that there are tons of dwellings that you can see from the different peoples that used to live here. The one behind us was a huge gathering place. In fact, this Pueblo, this is the Wupatki Pueblo. The Pueblo behind us started out as like a single family home and grew into a Pueblo that's more than a hundred rooms with like a ceremonial ball court and all kinds of cool stuff out here. So this main Pueblo is really, really cool. It actually stood um, and portions of it were like three stories tall. So pretty impressive structure. And then some of these areas down low, like this one here, they said would have been like an area that where they would have stored, you know, maybe corn and um, other seeds, pinion nuts, uh, maybe even bottles of or however they would contain water they might store that here and you can actually see these these stones over here they were grinding stones that's where they would like grind corn down to flour and things like that so this room behind me was actually specifically engineered so that they could actually have a fire in they developed a a ventilation system which allowed them to safely and effectively have a fire that's protected from the weather and they could get warm or even cook So the circular structure down here below us resembles what they would call a kiva. Basically it would be like a ceremonial room, although this one doesn't have a roof or a covering like they generally would. So what they think this actually might have been is like a huge gathering place, which could make sense because if you look at the walls, like there could even be like, a, like how it's kind of built like seating down there. You think so? Yeah. Here we are standing in the ball court. The ball court is where they would play ceremonial games, children would come and play, and people from other villages would sometimes come and play as well. It was a really important social gathering point for the indigenous people at the time. Now, according to information that we have, these walls used to be like six feet tall. So, I mean, they were pretty, pretty big. Okay, so this is our absolute favorite part. Of, this is the best thing in the world. This is the best thing and our favorite part of coming out here. That's this little square right here. Doesn't look very impressive, does it? But what this is, is this is an access point to a blowhole. What is a blowhole, you might ask? So a blowhole is actually a crack in the earth's surface. It's called an earth crack. Basically leads into a cavern. They have no idea how big this area is. The size, the dimensions, nothing. It's like, it's elusive. There are some other blowholes also located out here. This is the only one that the public has access to. It was created by earthquakes and tectonic activity. It works off of barometric pressure. So when it is, the pressure's low on the outside, this hole actually shoots air out of it and when the pressure is lower on the inside it actually sucks air down into the cave. Wouldn't that make it a suck hole though and not a blow hole? For demonstration purposes because you can't really see that putting the hair down. Uh oh. Oh gosh. Look out people. Watch. Okay you ready? Yep let's do this. Look at that. See all that air? Ooh. So, and actually the last time we came here and we visited, it was so hot outside. This is like an air conditioner. I can only imagine like if this was present when the natives and stuff lived here, this could be an air conditioner for them because this is hot in the summertime. So it's kind of, you know, crazy, but these two rooms up here were actually constructed to house park employees so back in the 1930s they had a couple of couples who lived here and worked in the park and uh, of course though the government had to get their share so they charged them ten dollars a month rent back in the day the Wupatki Pueblo is absolutely incredible. The blowhole's amazing. You definitely have to check that out. But make sure you leave some time to check out the other dwellings and pueblos in the area. They're dotted throughout the National Monument and they are all impressive in their own right.
These two national monuments are definitely worth a trip to come out and see if you're nearby, or even if you're not, just come out here. They're both absolutely beautiful, like scenery, and it's really cool to learn the history of the area and see how kind of like this area of Arizona was formed, and then just to learn about how like a lot of the indigenous people lived here. And how the landscape affected them. I mean, you have to remember that these guys were out here. They said, what, there is over 100 dwellings per square mile here? Uh, so there was one sign that we saw that said there were like 100 sites. So that means just little things that could be scattered around here. But if you stand up on one of these cliffs and just look out, you can just count different little structures that you can see all over the place out here. And the indigenous people were here witnessing these volcanic cinder cones be created, be formed, and imagine the impact that that had on their lives. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for coming along. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, like this video, and we're going to be exploring more of Arizona. So if you want to see more of Arizona, make sure you hit that notification bell. Yeah. It'll let you know <laughs> when we put out a video. All right, guys. I think that is going to do it for this video here in beautiful Flagstaff, Arizona. And until next time, stay, stay wonderful. Call it a day.